How do you know if a picture is fake or AI generated? I'm gonna show you how I use the Pixel 9 Pro XL to create some fake photos and why this phone is making it so much easier to trick people. So the reason I did not post this video last month is because I had the perfect excuse to take this phone with me on my trip to Scotland and it will make a lot more sense in a bit. I'm Shannon Morris, welcome back to the channel where we dive deep into all things tech, privacy, and online security. Now today we are exploring the new, Google Pixel 9 series and its next level AI features. Now in my daily life, I have heard a lot of concerns about fake photos, AI manipulation, and what this means for the future of trust in our digital world. So let's say that you're just scrolling on through on Instagram or some other social media network and you see something triggering. It could be a big fire on a building, a really creepy looking ghostly figure, a big car crash, whatever it might be. Maybe something like somebody at your school holding an illegal substance, a flood in your neighborhood street, a moose, walking around a grocery store. We've seen videos like that. Your immediate reaction is, OMG, what happened? It takes you off guard. But each photo was created in less than 10 seconds with Pixel's new image reimagining tool under the Magic Editor. Now the images though are so convincing that if you don't know what to look for or how to critique the photo, then you would likely think that it was real. Chris Welch, a Verge reporter on threads, actually posted this enormous thread of photos, showing real versus fake ones that they had created on a Pixel phone. And the pictures look really good. Even a trained skeptical eye would think some of these looked real. So let's take a look at a few of these and kind of determine if they're real or false. So he does explain at the very beginning that yes, these are fake photos, but we have one of what looks like a bike that got in a crash and we have a, a pretty busted up bicycle in the road. Uh, we have this one of a dog, which is really cute, but the doggy disappeared. We have another one of a whole bunch of different options of items that are sitting on what looks like a roof that caved in. Who knows, maybe it was a giant pig, we don't know. Uh, this one is fascinating. There's a lion prowling behind a gate and the pixel was smart enough to blur the image of the lion based on a natural aperture. So it's not a clear picture of the lion. It looks like it's actually in the background. So he does go through and show us a whole bunch, a whole slew of different examples of items that could look like reality if you're just passing them by on social media. And only a few of them really point out a glaring detail or something that's super, super obvious to make it look fake, like this pouring thing of spaghetti that's flying off of this table at a restaurant. That's probably going to be a fake. <laughs> so now that you've seen all those examples, let us discuss the AI tech and how it works and why it's such a hot topic and what Google is or is not doing about it. But first, I wanna tell you a quick story. This is a true story of something that happened to me and why I am honored to have my channel sponsored by Delete Me. About 10 years ago, I was, I can't believe it's been 10 years, but yeah, it has. <laughs> I was working at a YouTube network office and this guy started showing up at my workplace and calling many times a day, like over and over and over again to see when I would be at work. He figured out my office address, the phone number of a coworker, a private phone number and my schedule. And it turns out he had been stalking me for months, I had to get a court involved. In fact, I still have the pink slip from that court because it got way worse. And eventually one of my friends told me about this online service called Delete Me. I immediately signed up. I don't know for sure, but I suspect that he got my coworker's phone number from a data broker. Data brokers put private information up on the internet for anybody to search and find. That could be your phone number, home address, email address, your family's names, private information, your occupation, marital status, your age. And yeah, those websites are run by data brokers. He could have easily found all sorts of data on my coworkers and myself in order to get closer to me. And it was honestly pretty terrifying. I became a customer of Delete Me and I have never looked back. Delete Me is a service that removes your personally identifiable information from those data brokers. They go through the painstaking process of finding your data on all those different shady sites and they get it removed. So it's kind of like having your own personal cleanup crew for your online presence. I call them my digital assistant. It's so nice. Delete Me sends the opt-out request. They keep doing it regularly 
regularly because data brokers really like to recompile your data on their sites months after you've deleted it. So Delete Me goes back in and they delete it over and over again if they need to. Delete Me is a product that I have recommended for many years. And just a few months ago, they added a bunch of features to their family plans too, if you wanna protect your family as well. They also have a really wonderful security synopsis. So you can go over to their website and learn all about how they treat your data and what they do with the data that you give them in order to allow them to delete it off of data brokers. So I highly recommend if you are sus, go over to their security page and you can also send them messages as well and ask them questions. You can use the code SNUBS, that's S-N-U-B-S for 20% off and see how Delete Me can help you take your online privacy to the next level. Hit up joindeleteme.com slash Morse code, choose how many people you wanna protect and sign up today. Thank you so much to Delete Me for being my privacy assistant online when I have needed it most. And thank you so much for sponsoring this video. So just how easy is it to create a fake image on a pixel? I'm actually gonna show you my process. So I have this photo of me standing <laughs> on the banks of Loch Ness in Scotland. I know, you know where I'm going with this. It's known as the home of Nessie or the Loch Ness Monster. So let's give the world a new photo to add to this mystery of this cryptid creature because I am all about cryptids. I love that stuff. I live in Colorado. We're the home of Bigfoot. Well, one of the homes of a Bigfoot. So after opening the Google Photos app, you're going to click on the little magic editor button. It's that really pretty little button. And then once it loads, I can circle a spot in the water like I'll circle this little spot right next to me and then I'll click reimagine that button down at the bottom and then I can type in a prompt. So I'm gonna type in something here. We're gonna see if that works. So I did notice that some prompts work better than others. Either the photos it came up with were not quite what I was imagining. Like some of these, when I scroll through, they look, they look weird. They look not as obvious as I want them to look when I'm trying to find a Loch Ness monster photo. The tool would not necessarily let me reimagine the photo because I used a word that was blocked. That could be a problem. So you may have to do a few refreshes and a few retries to get a prompt to work as an AI generated scene that you actually like. So I'm gonna go through here and find a couple that I like. Ah, uh, some of these look really cute. Oh, here's a couple of good ones. Okay, so we found some good ones. <laughs> So after a bit of error and fixes, I finally got a couple of photos that were good enough that I was happy with them. The previous ones by far look more realistic as just like little strange lumps in the water. They could be rocks for all I know. But I wanted one that was fake enough to draw skepticism, but showed the form of Nessie enough that people would understand what I was going for. Okay, so how about something that could be more realistic, like this one of my studio? This is just a blank image of what I can currently see from from my studio set. So I took a picture of what I can see kind of behind the scenes. So ta-da, that's my behind the scenes. That's what I see here. So from here, I can do the same thing. I can circle an area and then I can choose reimagine. And in this sense, I'm going to do a creepy tall ghost. And ooh, I, that is uncomfortable to look at. That one actually looks really realistic. That is creepy. Ugh, that looks like a very tall ghost, like somebody standing there underneath a big tarp. Ooh, I don't like that one. That's very, I don't like it. Ooh, that's spooky. Mm. Don't like it at all, especially back there in that back corner, ew. Okay, so we're gonna try something else. Uh, let's put in a prompt for a little dog. I wanna put a little lab dog here in the studio. So some of these pictures do look a little odd or awkward or off, like <laughs> some of them are really bad. <laughs> so AI does not get it right every single time. It's Sometimes it's really bad. Um, but this one of a Labrador retriever kind of just sitting there on the floor. That one looks pretty realistic. So I'm gonna save that one. That's a cute picture actually. Now I want a lab. I want a dog for my current dog. Wouldn't that be cute if Sookie had a friend? Oh, friendo. All right, so we're gonna try one more, one more example here. I'm working in a basement studio. So we're going to add some water on the floor as if my basement is flooding. So let's add a puddle of water here. Okay, ooh, that one, <gasps> look at the reflection. Wow, that one came off really good. Like it even reflects the video game box that I have on the bottom shelf of the book 
bookshelf. So I'm going to save that one. That one looks really good. So it seems like in terms of all these pictures, the simpler, the better. And of all of these, the water one looks the most realistic in my opinion. And it's the one that is the least far-fetched that it could be used to trick an untrained eye pretty easily. Like I could send this to somebody and be like, oh, I can't record a new video today. There's a flood in my basement coming out of the bathroom back there. I have to get this fixed. And somebody pro would probably believe me if I sent them that photo. So upon its release, we all knew that the Google Pixel 9 series would include a heavy focus on AI. The magic editor and the reimagined tool can tweak photos to perfection, making everything from your weekend hike to the cryptid in a lake look kind of believable. You can add a building to the background. You could fix your hair if there's hair strands flying around in the, in the wind. You could remove people from the background we've been able to do magic editor and magic eraser for a long time in that sense, or even just like completely change what's in the image. And here's the wild part is the fact that it's so easy. You don't need Photoshop skills like I've learned to use with Adobe Photoshop for years. You don't need any kind of fancy tools. You just need the phone in your pocket. You don't even need to watch a tutorial to even learn how to use it. It's built right into the phone. You can just open up the photos app. You don't need a new app. It kind of just works. Works. And unlike Samsung's AI tool, which I also have tested out in my review as well as in day-to-day -day scenarios, that one requires you to sketch an image. Google Pixels requires no artistic ability, just a little text prompt, and the simpler the better. But both of these create images that are fake. So this sounds pretty sweet, right? So what's the problem here? Why is everybody freaking out about it? Well, let's put it like this. Do you remember the phrase, Pixar didn't happen? I do. <laughs> I grew up in the time before digital cameras was a thing. So Pixar didn't happen really didn't exist when I was younger. But now that digital cameras are such a thing, Pixar didn't happen is totally a thing that you hear all the time. But remember when you could use a photo to settle some kind of argument or prove that something actually happened? Like Pixar didn't happen. Oh, that thing happened at a bar last night. Yeah. Did you get a picture? Everybody asks whether it's a little ding in your rental car. Like for example, I make a video of my rental car before we drove it off the lot in Edinburgh because <laughs> there were a lot of dings in that rental car or capturing the history in the making like, OMG, the Edinburgh castle is on fire behind me. How disturbing. That's a fake. Don't believe it. Photos were the truth. Not anymore, folks. So with the Pixel 9, we're heading into this world where the default assumption will be that every single photo might be a fake. So Pixar, it didn't happen, won't work anymore. Fake is potentially going to be the new norm. So instead of using photos as the reality, photos are now treated with skepticism. While you can look at my photos that I created and say they're obviously not real, I have seen some pretty convincing AI photos, not just the ones that I showed you from threads. So here's where the things get a little bit sketchy. Imagine the chaos that this would cause in the era of fake news and misinformation. When AI can easily alter images, how do we know what's real and what's fake? The Pixel 9's AI could be used to create some kind of fake evidence or a spread some kind of disinformation. It's so easy to post a picture on threads or Twitter. I know it's called X, but I call it Twitter or even manipulate public opinion. The trust that we have built around photography is kind of gone in an instant. So after pulling its ability to generate the images that included people for most of this year, Google said the last week of August that they are rolling out the generation of people in their AI tools again. Back in February, this was paused because the AI tools were creating images of historically inaccurate events or photos. Like in these pictures, Gemini AI took the liberty to create whatever it wanted instead of our unfortunately not so diverse US history. That drew a lot of criticism, so Google halted that feature. Now, according to Google, the image generation of people will be made available to paid users of the Gemini AI chatbot after they have improved the Imogen 3 model, but it won't allow for AI image generation of specific people, children, or graphic content. So they did put a few protections in place, a few. Other safeguards include metadata tags and watermarks that a determined user can probably bypass before their pumpkin spice latte cools. Ask me how I know. 
<laughs> I might have tested that. Google's all like, don't worry, we're gonna keep on improving our guardrails. But meanwhile, anybody, including myself with a Pixel 9, can pump out all these hyper-realistic images that straight up look legit, and that's a little bit concerning. So where is the safety net? So far, there's not one. <laughs> Sorry, guys. The tech industry is moving a lot faster than the rules can keep up, especially when it comes to AI. Social media, too, is somewhat at fault. Over the last few months, I have seen over and over again AI images posted on Instagram or Facebook, and those are not tagged as AI by the platforms. And the platforms are supposed to be doing that automatically. On other platforms, such as Threads, as well as Instagram, you have the ability as a user to turn the AI tag on or off. And in some cases of a real photo, the built-in tag is still automatically applied. So people think that real photos are actually AI. So we cannot depend on platforms to tell us whether or not these images are actually AI created or not. Watermarks also are so easy to remove with imaging tools and metadata can be completely scrubbed from a photo before uploading. Yeah, there's tools for that too. And not to make things a little bit worse, not to worry you, but the election season is around the corner. <laughs> Yay. And the potential for AI generated misinformation is uh, pretty real. Back in December of last year, Google posted this blog article about how they are introducing safeguards to combat abuse on their platforms, such as tools to help identify AI generated content. Now Google is rolling out more protections across its AI products. They announced in August, like restricting what kind of responses you'll get via Gen AI, including in search, in YouTube summaries, and image generation on Gemini. But is that enough? Can we really trust that it's not going to be abused? It's on the internet. It's going to be abused. Okay, so what is the takeaway here? Google's Pixel 9 is such a beast. I love this phone. I mean, I used it the whole time I was in Scotland, and I loved it, no doubt. The AI capabilities are incredible, and they can help us create some really amazing memories, like like, I love using magic eraser to erase people from my photos, not just for their privacy, because, you know, I'm rolling in here like a content creator with a YouTube channel. I don't want to put random people in my videos. I really don't. So I'm going to use magic editor for their privacy. But it also makes my photos look a lot more aesthetically pleasing when I'm going to these like tourist destinations in Edinburgh. But this is a very big butt and not the good kind. The ease with which it can create fake images and open up Pandora's box of like ethical and security concerns, it's there. And as much as Google promises to improve its safeguards, the reality is the line between what's real and what's fake is gonna get blurry, especially if you're not used to looking at this stuff every single day. And we need to be very careful about how we use and trust these new kind of tools. What you can create now on your phone is only hampered by your creativity and the personal ethical dilemma that you may experience when you're using these kind of tools. What's that quote? There's a quote from Spider-Man. I think Uncle Ben said it. With great power comes great responsibility. So what do you all think? Are you excited about the potential of AI photo editing? Do you currently use it? Or are you worried about how it might be misused? Or maybe you are worried and you still use it. That's me. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below because I'm genuinely really curious to hear your take. If you found this video helpful or maybe even a little bit spooky because it is spooky season after all, do you like my uh, Pokemon Spooktober sweater? I sure do. Don't forget to hit that button down below to like and subscribe and ring the little subscriber notification bell icon. I know sometimes it doesn't work, but hopefully it'll work for you. Also a huge shout out to Delete Me for sponsoring. It's so important for conversations like this. So I really appreciate that they sponsored this video. I'll see you next time. Bye y'all.